Second, yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel. Now, after showing Elijah that he worked hard in gentle whisper, after showing that he had been working very hard in a gentle whisper, God spoke to Elijah again, asking the same question. What are you doing here, Elijah? This question meant, what are you doing here while I am working so hard? <laughs> Elijah replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword, and I am the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. His words were exactly the same. He sensed God's teaching of a gentle whisper, but instead of accepting God's teaching through a gentle whisper, he wanted to hear from God directly. So God made his teaching very clear to him. God said to him, Go back and anoint Haziel, king over Aram, Jehu, king over Israel, and Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Meholah, to succeed him as prophet. God added, Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. God prepared these three people for his purpose. Even though Elijah could not see God's work in Israel, God had prepared them for himself. But that was not all. Look at verse 18. Let's read this verse together. Let's go. Yet I reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. 7,000! All whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. Elijah thought that he was the only one in Israel. But here, God has preserved 7,000 people whose hearts are fully dedicated to him. In those days... The size of the land of northern, uh, the northern kingdom of Israel was less than one-fiftieth the size of California. Even with 7,000 fully dedicated servants, we can really conquer California completely. Even John Wesley prayed that if God gave him 100 men who loved God alone and hated sin, then he would set the whole world on fire. Think about 7,000 men serving God's work in that small country. It was indeed amazing. God had done an amazing thing through a gentle whisper. God indeed worked hard in a gentle whisper. Elijah couldn't say a word. Elijah felt embarrassed. Now Elijah could catch the meaning of God appearing in a gentle whisper instead of the great powerful wind or earthquake or fire. Also, at the same time, the meaning of the question, what are you doing here, Elijah, became very clear to him. Now he should go back to the mission field and work hard with God and together with God's people. Through this, God made Elijah's mission very clear and restored him to return to the battlefield. It seems that people are sinful and they don't care about God's command at all. Often we feel that we are the absolute minority. Sometimes we feel like crying out to God, saying, Lord, they have rejected your covenants, and I am the only one left. But that's not the case. Surely there are 7,000 in California, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal or Asherah, to money or to pleasure. It was 7,000 for Israel, a small country. Then for California, 50 times 7,000. That is 350,000 zealous men and women for the state of California. Amen. We need to find them and mobilize them for God's kingdom work. While we work hard for God's work, God himself works so hard, sometimes in a strong and powerful wind, sometimes in a gentle whisper. We need to be Elijah's today, carrying the Lord's standard challenging the sin of the world. We need to be the members of those 7,000 people for God with our heart's complete determination not to kneel to money or to pleasure. Let's find all these zealous and dedicated people to God in God's way in a gentle whisper. 
through our one-to-one Bible studies, helping them one by one know God's word and turn to him decisively. In this very dark generation, God is working hard in Gentle Whisper. On our campuses, God is working hard, preparing people to be ready to accept God's calling. Let's learn God's way of doing his work and being his whispering voice to many college students through teaching them the Bible one-on-one. Let's pay attention to what God is doing and what God is saying very carefully so that we can hear his gentle whisper. Let's pray that we may all uh, that we may find all whom God has prepared on our campuses and who will decisively accept God's calling. Hello, my name is Ty Rothrock. I was born in Orange County, California. I grew up in a Bible-believing environment. I went to a private Christian school. But as I got older, I drifted farther and farther away. I started to dye my hair in seventh grade and became a punk rocker. At one time, I even had a mohawk. I got a guitar and played in punk bands with a big circle of friends. All I did was go to parties and drink and do drugs. To me, doing what I wanted to do and getting the most out of life was using my life in the best way. I wanted, to, I wanted a carefree life, so I subscribed to the YOLO lifestyle. I dropped out of high school when I was 16. I worked, but all of my money went to partying and drugs and alcohol. Eventually, I began to, began to realize the emptiness inside of me, and I focused on that a lot. I wondered why I was so depressed. Why am I so empty? The God-shaped hole in my heart became so prevalent that all I could think about was how empty my life was. This led me to have real deep depression. But then the chance to move away from Orange County came, and I moved to the South Bay with my mom and stepdad. I decided to go to El Camino College to find out about life. Then one day, while I was walking back to my car from class, I was asked by a Bible teacher to study the Bible. We studied John's gospel, and I was amazed at God's words in the first five verses. I was comforted when Jesus said, in him was life. That was what I really wanted, and that's what I was really looking for, a meaningful and beautiful life. Then I studied Genesis with missionary John. There I met God very personally. I knew I had to make disciples, but when I studied Genesis 17, verse 5, for I have made you a father of many nations, when God was talking with Abraham, There I saw God's vision for my life. God wanted me to be a father of many nations. Through me, God saw nations of people coming to know him and have life together with him. God's voice spoke to me very personally, and I remember telling God, that was you, that was you that said that. From then on, this has been my life key verse for my Christian life. So I started my mission life really by being a shepherd on Dominguez Hills. Mission life was really exciting. I was still in school, and so every day I would fish for students and ask them for Bible study. I had many Bible studies with many different students. I was zealous for God and so would fish for hours and hours. Bible studies with students were really active and alive. I could see how God helped me in each Bible study and was with me. And because of that, as I spoke, divine things would come out of me that later I would say, whoa, that was you that was speaking, because I would not have thought about that. God would teach me as I taught the Bible. Then God blessed me to marry by faith. The idea of marriage was so big in my heart that one night I really prayed to God and said, if you want me to marry, I will marry. And if not, I will not. I decided to give this matter to Jesus because my decision was that I would serve him all the days of my life. And at my surprise, God heard me and knew who he wanted me to marry and revealed my wife, Jessica, to me. I could see that God had already been working on this matter in the background. Through marriage, God has been helping me to grow as a mature man of God and learning to co-work together with my wife. God has blessed us greatly with a son, David, and now a daughter, Isabella. Being a father is a lot of work, on top of being a Bible teacher, husband, but it is all rolled into one. Together, they help me grow and mature as a servant of God. My weakness has always been fear. uh, I developed a sense of insecurity because I moved around with my mom a lot. And because of this, I always doubted myself and let fear come in. I was scared that I would do something wrong or that I would fail. I changed my major constantly because I did not want to graduate and go out into the real world with a real job. (laughs) After many years of struggle in this matter, God helped me to understand something. 
When I love him with all of my heart, then that means I am to leave everything else under his control, including my job, situation, and future. That is his responsibility. My responsibility is to love him and serve him with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. This released a great burden off of me because I relied on myself for everything. God showed me, just as Adam was to serve and love God alone, God's responsibility was to provide everything. So now I could move forward and not be afraid. I graduated uh, CSUDH in 2013. I wasn't, sh I wasn't sure exactly what job to get since I went to Dominguez Hills for healthcare management and was unsure of what jobs were available. The one thing I knew was that I must serve God on my campus. Then as I got a job, every one or two years or so, God gave me a job paying more and more each time. Until now, I have a legit career job in the wonderful world of workers' compensation <laughs> as a claims examiner for Kaiser Permanente. God shows me that my mission life for the gospel is a sanctified and holy life, and in God's eyes, it is so precious to him. My mission life is living by faith in Jesus, and faith in Jesus brings me salvation, satisfaction, and eternal life. Like the 7,000, I have not bowed to the idols of this world, but have worshipped the Lord my God and served him only. I have been dedicated to him alone. This is because God continues to work in me like a gentle whisper. This is God's work in my life. I see that God is preparing me for this mission to find those on my campus who have not completely bowed down to the idols of this world, but who are looking for true meaning and purpose through Jesus Christ. In this way, through a gentle whisper, God can use me to raise up even 7,000 disciples in California. I want to seek God alone and serve God alone with all of my heart. I pray that God may use this gentle whisper as a real spiritual wind on my campus, and that through real dedication to God's mission, I may raise up seven disciples in the next year. One word, God works through a gentle whisper. Amen. Let's, let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today's message, showing us, Lord, that you are working in each one of us uh, very hard. Lord, you are molding our character through all of our challenges and difficulties in life. But through faith in you, we can rise over these things. With dedication to you, we can rise above these things and really see that you are working in this generation, that you are working in all of our hearts. I pray, Father, that we may go to our campuses and find all those who have not bowed down to Baal or the Asherah pole, but that we may find them, teach them the word of God one-to-one, -one, and raise up even 7,000 disciples. Lord, may you be with our uh, prayer topic of 400 one-to-one -one Bible studies and 200 disciples, that in this way, through one-to-one -one Bible study, we may accomplish this. Lord, may you bless our uh, worship service continuously, and may you bless our uh, conference abundantly. May your Holy Spirit be with us. We thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.